My horde, when it comes to the macabre, I would consider myself decently knowledgeable. Not a professional by any means, but still. And it is becoming much less frequent that I find a topic that I am not at least somewhat familiar with, or one I haven't researched in the past. However, a question posed to me on Twitter proved that there is at least another topic that I have failed to consider. What is the difference between a male and a female serial killer? So, as I promised you, Void, here is my response. It's a bit late, but I hope it will indeed answer your question. Shall we begin? You know the drill by now, my lovelies. Pick your poison, sit back, relax, and let us have ourselves a little conversation. When the term serial killer comes to mind, most people think of a very specific physical and psychological image. Most often they picture a very physically large, white, intimidating looking man in their mid to late thirties out on the prowl for their victims in the dead of night, a scene that wouldn't be out of place in a Hollywood slasher film. As for the psychological aspect, people tend to think of serial killers as being these sadistic, insane, hyper-intelligent, power-hungry individuals who just revel in the gore, fear, and chaos that they cause, or even that there are these deviant sexual predators with a taste for blood that invoke horrifying nicknames from the press such as the Ripper, the Night Stalker, the Son of Sam, or even the Cannibal Killer, and how they're just these unstoppable, un inhuman beings. And, uh, while most of those ideas aren't wrong per se, they aren't entirely correct either. These ideas of what a serial killer is, looks like, or even their mentality are stereotypes. And while, yes, many serial killers do in fact match these ideas, there are plenty more serial killers who simply do not. Therein lies the problem with them when it comes to studying serial killers or even stopping them when they do pop up. This almost unwavering stereotypical serial killer of, you know, what they look like, who they are, etc, etc. And that's because when you stick to a stereotype, and only that stereotype, you give yourself tunnel vision. And by doing so, you completely blind yourself to anything but that idea in your head even being remotely possible, or even a conceivable possibility. For most of recorded history, societies have seemed to overlook, minimize, or flat out deny that women are capable of being murderers, or even serial killers for that matter. And unfortunately, this is something that is still happening. Several past societies, and many individuals today, claim that women are all but completely incapable of committing any horrific act of any kind. And this applies to a horrifyingly extensive list of criminal behavior and unspeakable acts. And this is including, but not at all limited to, being perpetrators of spousal or partner abuse, uh, predatory behavior such as stalking or pedophilia, uh, committing acts of rape, and yes, even murder. Now, I will admit that some of these crimes being perpetrated by a woman occurs much less frequently than those same crimes being perpetrated by a man. However, I cannot truthfully say, nor will I say, that those crimes occur with such a rarity that the idea of them being committed by a woman should ever be ignored or dismissed in any capacity. Unfortunately, most of society does not see it that way, and most of the time, when a woman is on the criminal side of the law, there's almost always some sort of justification that comes out with it. Uh, the most common one, when it comes to murder at least, is the idea that the woman is the true victim in the situation, that they were either just so mentally unsound that they couldn't possibly know what they were doing, that they were protecting their life or the lives of their children, and, well, yeah, sometimes that is true. This is not always the case, but it's always there, there's always this justification of it. And those very frequent justifications 
are in spite of the countless cases, documentations, documentaries, videos, etc. on female killers and female serial killers that are all publicly available. And I'm including the now eight videos on my own channel that are all covering female killers and female serial killers exclusively. It almost seems redundant to me that I have to keep revisiting this topic and it's honestly getting on my nerves. The idea that all women are just these angelic deities of divine innocence incapable of very real, if horrifying, aspects of the human condition and human psyche is not only mind-blowing and infuriating to me, but also incredibly unsettling, insulting, and utterly idiotic. And on top of that, honestly, it's pretty damn sexist too. Especially given the fact that when it comes to such criminal acts happening, ignoring the possibility that the perpetrator could be female is quite literally playing with people's lives on multiple levels. What I personally find to be the most troubling about this is that it has gotten to the point that some researchers believe that we as a society have missed or dismissed hundreds of female serial killers throughout history. And that leaves us with a lot of bodies and a lot of killers that have gone completely unpunished. Moving on. Now, male and females, men and women, as a whole, are different. And they're different in a lot of ways. And that's perfectly fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. However, it seems that this fact has failed to be acknowledged when it comes to serial killers specifically. In fact, the sexes differ so much that the only aspects that they have in common is their body count and, well, the fact that they're serial killers. The first and foremost difference is that male and female serial killers tend to choose their victims and commit their crimes in very different ways, which may be due to the thousands of years of psychological evolution that each sex has. Researchers have found that male serial killers tend to hunt their victims, who are often strangers to them. Female serial killers, on the other hand, tend to gather their victims, targeting people around them who they may already know. Marissa Harrison, associate professor of psychology at Penn State, Harrisburg, said that the findings could actually help police with murder investigations. You see, if a murder has been committed, and there isn't a known suspect. You can sometimes use the details of the crime to form a profile of what the perpetrator might look like or their mentality. So if you know for fact that a man is way more likely to commit a specific crime in a very certain way, and a woman, when committing that same crime, is way more likely to do it in a completely different fashion, you can hopefully use that information to help investigators go down the correct path in the first place and avoid them chasing false leads, which wastes time, resources. Now, while there is considerable public interest in serial killers, there has been very little research actually done on their crimes. And this is possibly because serial killers are in fact relatively rare. But while working on a previous study, Harrison actually started to notice a difference between male and female serial killing patterns. And she was very interested in exploring these differences. You see, humans live as hunters and gatherers for about 95% of our history. And these ancient roles could actually help explain the differences that Harrison was seeing. Now, historically, men hunted animals as prey, and women gathered nearby resources like water, grains, and plants for food. 
And if we are to look into evolutionary psychology, something left over from those old roles could be affecting how male and female serial killers choose their victims and commit their crimes. Now, researchers found that male serial killers were almost six times as likely to kill a stranger, while their female counterparts were nearly twice as likely to kill a person that they already knew. Additionally, 65.4% of male serial killers stalked their victims, compared to the 3.6% of female serial killers to do so. Now, interestingly enough, in that same study that concluded those percentages, the 3.6% of female serial killers who engaged in the stalking-like behavior during their crimes were the same female serial killers who actually had men assisting them in those crimes. And again, in that very same study, information that was gathered from media sources also found that there was a huge difference in the nicknames given to serial killers by the media. You see, women were way more likely to be given nicknames that denoted their gender, like Jolly Jane or Tiger Woman, while the men were way more likely to be given nicknames that would suggest the brutality of their crimes, like the Kansas City Slasher or uh, Cannibal Killer, for lack of a better example. Despite all of this, I would like to stress that while evolutionary psychology may help explain the differences between male and female serial killers, it does not mean that any one person is born to commit a crime or to commit a crime in a certain way. Evolution doesn't mean you're predetermined to do certain things or to act a certain way. It means that it may be possible to make predictions about behavior based on our evolutionary past. In this case, the behaviors that are reminiscent of sex-specific behaviors or assignments in the ancestral environment for serial killers. And those traits can be better understood when looked through an evolutionary lens. Female serial killers comprise of less than 20% of all serial killers according to Psychology Today. And, as I've been stating, are very different from their male counterparts in many, many ways. Now, when the general public thinks of female serial killers or female killers as a whole, they typically come up with a few names respectively. Uh, these names being Jane Topan, Lizzie Borden, uh, the Granny Ripper, or sometimes even Elizabeth Bathory, the Blood Countess. But most commonly, at least in the United States, they think of Aline Warnos, arguably the most infamous United States female serial killer in contemporary times. Now, Aline Warnos, for those unfamiliar, was a highway prostitute who shot and killed seven men in Florida between the year of 1989 and 1990. However, before Warnos, most people believed that female serial killers simply didn't exist. And I don't just mean the general public, I mean not even the FBI believed it. In fact, in 1998, a member of the FBI stated outright at a press conference that there were no female serial killers, period. However, in an interview with Scott Bond, a professor of criminology and author of the book Why We Love Serial Killers, The Curious Appeal of the World's Most Savage Murderers on the subject, he's pretty bluntly stated just how wrong that statement was. Uh, to quote, that's just wrong. You can go back through recorded history and see dozens of instances of female serial killers. In fact, the most recent count I was able to find was 514 in total, and that's since 1910, and it was calculated in March of last year. Another such example of a female serial killer is Nanny Doss, who killed 11 people in Oklahoma between the 1920s and 1954. Her victims included her five husbands, two of her sisters, two of their children, a mother-in-law, and her own mother. But what drives female serial killers? Well, the most common female serial killer is what is known as a comfort or gain killer. 
basically that means that they're killing for some material end, be it financial or something they want, something along those lines. Now, interestingly enough, and kind of strangely, uh, research done by SciTechConnect found that even though most female serial killers killed for financial gain or money, the majority of them actually came from middle or upper class families. So what drives a male serial killer? Well, most male serial killers are either power oriented or have some sort of sexual motivation, but that doesn't mean that sex is involved. I know that sounds weird. But a lot of male serial killers do have very different motives. For the most part, it's about control and domination. Uh, sometimes it's about material gain, uh, some do it for the thrill of it, classifying them as a hedonistic serial killer. But there's also a percentage of male serial killers that are known as visionary serial killers, and those are the ones who think that they are killing for a particular cause. For example, uh, they believe that they are killing for God or the devil. The Son of Sam would be a very good example of that. So what are some signs of a future female serial killer? Now, many female serial killers do not follow the line that their male counterparts do. Uh, their buildup is very different, and they actually become involved in theft, fraud, or embezzlement prior to becoming murderers or serial killers. See, their overall motivation is material gain in some way, and then it escalates into murder. They find out that they gain control and gain more money by killing people. You see, a good example of this would be uh, in the case of Dorothea Pyrrhant, where it was convenient for her to make those elderly people quote-unquote disappear and just to bury them in the backyard and then get rid of the ev evidence so she could get their social security checks, which was more than what she charged them for rent. Now, female serial killers pre-murder crimes also start much later than their male counterparts. Now, typically, they become involved in financial crimes during their late teens or during their 20s. But while this is the most common, it's not the only motivation. That being said, what are the signs of a future male serial killer? Well, male serial killers pre-crimes actually start a lot younger. Now, according to Bond, it actually begins around puberty, usually around the age of 13 or so, and they often start by tormenting or killing animals. Uh, sometimes they engage in stalking or petty theft. Other times they may have things like assault or some sexually based crimes mixed in there, and they might even actually do jail time for them. So why are men more prone to becoming serial killers? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure as I really didn't find any information on the subject that I personally considered to be unbiased or was just viable in general or was conducted recently enough to still be considered accurate with an acceptable or reasonable margin of error, just for me personally. How common are serial killers? Serial killers only make up about 1% of the murders in the United States, but that is not a percentage to scoff at, not by a long shot. You see, the United States is actually at an all-time murder low. This is according to Bond. See, we're at about 15,000 homicides annually in the United States, which is actually down quite dramatically since the 1990s, when it was close to 25,000 annually. 15,000 homicides a year means that there are about mm, 150 serial killings per year in the United States, give or take, with each serial killer having the minimum of three victims and averaging somewhere around 10 at the most, sometimes way more, sometimes way less. And this is from what I could personally calculate out. Uh, I actually stated in a previous video that there are about 31 to 60 serial killers in the United States at any given time, and this was based on the FBI statistics. I would actually like to kind of redact and correct that statement as I have recently discovered that there is a heavy debate and general disagreement from professionals in the field of criminal psychology who are pretty adamant that the FBI numbers on this matter are actually grossly inaccurate. And 
when looking at a worldwide view and not just the United States, the statistics are even further skewed. And this is because while the United States and a few other countries actually keep meticulous records of their serial killers, other countries simply do not. So as to how common serial killers are in or out of US borders is really anyone's guess at this time. 